What would you do if you were shrunk down to the size of a nickel and stuck at the bottom of a blender with 60 seconds until the blade starts spinning? Veritasium just did a video on this famous Google interview question that focused mostly on the possibility of climbing or jumping out. And even though Google pretty much admitted that brain teaser questions like this are useless in interviews, it's still a really interesting physics problem, and I wanted to propose a different solution. Since you're so small, could you use your shirt like a parachute and ride out on any updraft created by the spinning blades? The success of this approach would depend on two things. First, the three-dimensional shape of the flow inside the blender. If it's just tangential flow in layers of stacked circles like this, then you're probably doomed. However, if the rotating blades create vertical circulation like this, sucking air down in the middle and pushing it up along the sides, then there's a chance you could ride the updraft along the outside and escape from the top. That approach could work if the air velocity is high enough to lift you based on your mass and the lift force created depending on the surface area of your t-shirt. I found that it would require an air velocity of about 5 meters per second to lift me if I was scaled down to the size of a nickel and using my t-shirt as a parachute. I won't go through the whole calculation in this video, but I'll put the details in the description, so feel free to read that and check for errors if you think I made a mistake. So that seems within the realm of possibility, but how would I determine the direction and speed of flow inside a blender? I debated putting some glitter in a blender and taking high-speed video, but I didn't want to literally Mark Rober glitter bomb myself, so that didn't seem like a good idea. Instead, I chopped up some bits of paper that would be easier to clean up and taped streamers at various locations around the blender so I could see the direction of airflow. Note that I had to bypass the safety mechanism on my blender that normally prevents it from operating without the lid on, so please do not try this at home. An initial test with some regular speed video gave me some hope because you can clearly see many of the bits of paper being ejected from the top of the blender. However, further examination of high speed video started to quash my hopes. It looks like most of the bits of paper that are being ejected from the top are doing so after collisions with the blades and ricocheting off the sides of the container, not just riding an updraft safely along the outer edge. The streamers also appear to be indicating mostly tangential flow and not the upward flow along the outside of the container that I had hoped for. So it seems likely that this approach would probably result in a bloody but hopefully quick and painless death. However, I'm still holding out for one thing. My blender has this tower with three sets of blades, so even if you make it past the first set, you have to then make it past the second and third. There is a much higher probability of a collision as a bit of paper moves up the container. The hypothetical blender in the Veritasium video only has one set of blades at the bottom. 